Warren Buffett just bought another $770 million worth of Sirius XM, bringing his total ownership of the company to almost $3 billion, which makes it his 10th largest investment. Except, where is it? Well, it's actually listed all the way down here as his 31st biggest investment. Sirius XM is Warren Buffett's secret stock because his true ownership is hidden between multiple share listings, which not only hides how he's been acquiring tens of millions of shares each month this year, but that he also now controls 26% of the business. I spent the last week digging through the numbers to find out why he's buying it. And to my surprise, it actually has nothing to do with the business at all, but has everything to do with a technical stock market trick that almost guarantees that he will make money on the trade. Let's start at the beginning. While it does take a little bit more work to find the investment Buffett is piling into this year, all of the information is publicly available. The Securities and Exchange Commission has a bunch of reporting rules for companies and one of them is called Form 4, Statement of Changes in Beneficial Ownership. It's a public filing that needs to be submitted to the SEC when there are material changes in the holdings of company insiders. Basically, if a director or an officer, such as the chief executive officer is buying or selling shares in the company that they work at, then they have to report it through a Form 4. But it also includes one other group of people, shareholders who own more than 10% of the company. So if Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, was to buy more than 10% of another company's shares, they'd need to submit a Form 4 within two days every time they trade the stock. This is exactly what happened in 2017. This is the Form 3 filing, which they made and discloses that they own more than 10% of the company, which is great for us because we get to view this trade in real time rather than have having to wait for the 13F filing at the end of the quarter as per usual. Buffett has been buying shares in Liberty Media on and off for years, but this month he significantly accelerated his buying. There are eight Form 4 filings that Buffett submitted in March, where he details trades of Liberty Media shares. The most recent filing discloses trades made on the 26th, 27th and 28th of March. He bought 2.5 million shares of Series A Liberty Sirius XM, at around $29 per share, bringing the total amount held to 32.7 million shares. In another Form 4 filing, it shows on the same day he bought Series C Liberty Sirius XM shares, about 7.6 million, bringing the total to 65.5 million. All of these transactions are code P. If you go on Wikipedia, you can see that this means an open market purchase, so we can confirm that he wasn't gifted shares or wasn't using derivatives or something. Something. All in all, Buffett has added almost 30 million shares of Liberty Media just in the last month, increasing his investment by about 50%. But hang on a minute, I thought we were talking about Sirius XM, not Liberty Media. Well, to really understand what it is exactly that Warren Buffett has been buying through these Form 4 filings, we need to understand a little bit more about how Liberty Media works. Liberty Media Corporation was founded by John Malone in 1990. And it's not like a typical company. It's basically three different companies under one roof, or to be more precise, three divisions Liberty Sirius XM, Liberty Formula One, and Liberty Live. And each of the divisions has three classes of tracking shares A, B, and C. A tracking share is a type of stock that tracks the economic performance of a particular segment of the company. Or in other words, there's no shares that you can buy to invest in in Liberty Media Corporation, but you can buy shares in the specific divisions. The A, B and C shares just represent different voting rights. A shareholders get one vote per share, B shareholders get 10 votes, and C shareholders get zero votes. The B shares are really just for John Malone. He owns 97% of those B shares, which gives him 49% voting power over the divisions. So taking another look at Buffett's Form 4, we can see that he's been buying shares that track the Liberty Sirius XM division of Liberty Media. Hopefully you're still with me. So what exactly is Liberty Sirius XM? Well, it's not even really a business. It actually just holds investment in one company. 
Sirius XM. In fact, Liberty Sirius XM owns 84% of Sirius XM shares. This came to be back in 2008. Two radio companies, Sirius and XM, decided to merge their businesses, but only a few months later, they were on the brink of bankruptcy. John Malone, founder of Liberty Media, came to the rescue, giving them a loan in exchange for a large equity position. So today, Liberty Sirius XM owns 84% of Sirius XM. Which means if you buy 1% of Liberty Sirius XM, you're essentially owning 0.84% of Sirius XM. Hopefully somebody out there is counting the amount of times that I've said Sirius XM in this video. As of the latest purchase, Buffett owns 30.08% of Liberty Sirius, which equates to about 25% ownership interest in the Sirius company. And if that wasn't complicated enough for you already, Buffett also just owns some Sirius XM shares directly, about 40 million of which which 30 million he bought in the last quarter, about 1% of Sirius shares, meaning Buffett's total ownership is about 26%. The company Buffett has been building ownership in is a radio broadcasting business. They run music, talk shows, news, and sports through their channels, and sell advertising and business services to generate revenue. They also own Pandora, a music streaming service similar to Spotify with premium and ad-supported subscription options. And according to Sirius, through their radio and online services, they have about 34 million subscribers and 150 million monthly listeners, which is a lot, but it's a much smaller operation than, say, Spotify, who has about 600 million monthly users. On a fundamental level, the business is actually doing pretty well. They recorded almost $9 billion of revenue in 2023, which was the same as the previous year, but more than double since 2014. Profit has been steadily increasing over time, reaching $1.2 billion in the last year year, and all of those profits are being put to use in three main ways, paying off some of their debt burden, paying shareholders a dividend, and doing share repurchases. Also, I'm using Ticker to find all of this data, so head to hamishhotter.com forward slash ticker if you want to try it for yourself. But as I said in the introduction, Warren Buffett buying Liberty Sirius XM shares has absolutely nothing to do with the actual business. It started with this headline. In September last year, John Malone proposed a deal to merge his Liberty Sirius XM shares with the actual Sirius XM ones, which from a simplicity standpoint makes complete sense. Both Liberty Sirius and Sirius XM shares buy you basically the same thing, an ownership piece of Sirius XM. So why not just combine them into one listing? What's interesting about this idea is that it opens up the possibility for something called a risky arbitrage. Risk arbitrage is the investment strategy to profit from the narrowing of a gap of the trading price of the target stock and the acquirer's valuation of that stock in an intended takeover deal. In this case, Liberty Sirius shares and Sirius XM shares both represent some sort of ownership in the same business, but the Liberty shares are significantly cheaper. And the maths to figure this out is relatively simple. Sirius XM shares have a market capitalization of $14 billion. So when we add all the shares together, the current price of the business is about $14 billion. Liberty Sirius XM shares have a market cap of 9.3 billion. So why are the Liberty shares so much less? Well, in part, it's because the Liberty shares don't equate one-to-one -to, -one to the direct Sirius shares. Remember, Liberty only owns about 84% of Sirius. So the $9.4 billion market cap reflects the value of 84% of Sirius shares. Divide 9.4 billion by 0.84 and you get the current price of Sirius XM if bought through through Liberty shares, which is $11.1 billion. In simple terms, ownership of Sirius XM can be bought for about 22% cheaper if done through Liberty. And that gap in valuation will close if the merger is completed. It will close because you'll have two different listings basically being merged into one. If Sirius XM shares currently reflect the value of the business after the merger, buying Liberty shares today would result in a 28% return after the merger. That's what's called a risky arbitrage. And if you're buying the Liberty Sirius shares, you're hoping that the merger goes through and that the Sirius XM shares are correctly pricing the company. But it's not without risk. It could be the case that Sirius XM simply declines after the merger 
future, rather than Liberty shares increasing. We only know that the gap will close if the merger is completed. We don't know in which direction it will close. This is actually why some traders will both buy Liberty shares and short sell Sirius XM shares, so that they benefit regardless of how the gap closes. The other risk is that the deal doesn't close. Traders who have been buying Liberty specifically for this trade may sell, causing a sharp decline. Buffett owns $2.7 billion of Liberty Sirius XM A and C shares, as well as another $150 million of Sirius XM directly, about $2.8 billion in total. Which, as I mentioned before, makes his interest in the company about his 10th largest investment. So it's clearly a very important bet for Berkshire Hathaway away but at the same time, it's also kind of small. Berkshire Hathaway has about $350 billion invested in US equities, making the serious investment less than 1% of the portfolio. And since he already owns about 30% of the Liberty Sirius shares, there isn't much more that he can do here. I mean, even if he bought all of the shares of Liberty Sirius, which is obviously impossible, but even if he could do that, it would still be a t about a $10 billion investment, which is about 3% of Berkshire's total US equity portfolio. Buffett's main problem isn't that there aren't good investments out there, it's that he has too much money for any of them to make a difference. It's actually one of the advantages that we have against the big money managers. We can look at smaller companies like Buffett did in his early years. And if you're interested in learning more about how you can invest in stocks, by far the best courses available right now are from New Money Education. There's lessons for beginners who are looking to understand the basics of how the stock market works and the simplest methods for building long-term wealth, as well as a course on stock analysis if you want to learn how to invest using Warren Buffett's principles. I've personally been through the course and it hits all of the important points that I've personally used to make about 30% per year in the markets for about seven years. The quality of the presentations is insane. It's by far the easiest way to learn the complexities of stock picking. If you want to learn more, I'll leave a link down in the description below and feel free to send me an email if you have any questions.